IEDs, improvised explosive devices, or roadside bombs. Some also call them homemade bombs or pressure cookers. Name it whatever, but surely they contemplate dreadful damage. They are bluntly capable of ripping both your torso and your vehicle apart in fractions of second. When I first reached Waziristan, the situation was absolutely grim. I was hurried to our forward post in Angur Adda. This place was not new for me. I had been posted in Vana and Angur Adda before also. Since 2001, when the war on terror started and the terror actually started spilling over in Pakistan. Always had this border city in the limelight of breaking news. Because South Waziristan was the birthplace of TTP. Tehreeke Taliban Pakistan. The Khwarij. The birthplace of hell dogs. One way or another, war continued in this region. And because this is the place of their origin, they never forget this. No matter what, no matter where they run and hide, even they are in the darkest caves of Afghanistan, they always remember South Waziristan. We gave them a lot of chances. We gave them hell of time. But they always kept on betraying the peace deals. We have been trying decade long to convince them to stop this killing of innocent civilians. But they always disappointed our will of peace. And every time when we were close to their throat, they used to fall down on our feet and beg for peace. But the moment when peace was given to them, they again started their operations. And we found out one hard fact. There is no peace with Quaridge. You don't negotiate with hell dogs. And the only way to stop them is to take them from the head and throw them in the deepest pits of hell. Hundreds of them or thousands of them. Keep no prisoners. They deserve to be in hell. Just make sure they get a painful journey. I knew this from day one and I will do this till my last day. Welcome to Killing Hikmat. The Ghost Series. Let me tell you what I did with Hikmat Masood. South Waziristan not just has a complicated border, but also a complicated culture, a complicated fabric of tribes, and a complicated terrain, of course. If you join all tribes of Pakistan, these three to four tribes of Waziristan are more complicated than all of them together. Notably, Masood. Bitani and Wazir tribe. There are many subclans in these tribes and further divisions in those subclans. There is a lot of confound imparity among them all. You can call it genes or long tribal history or even self-interest. You can take many names. They all carry a very dangerous hate-love relation among them. You will find them fighting each other to the throat and then suddenly find them together enjoying dinner. Morning enemy is evening friend. If you call psychiatrists to study their behavior closely, surely they will tell you that this is intense self-interest. Meanness to the depth of bone marrow. It is the self-interest which drives them against each other and for each other. But one thing is common in them. They are fierce. They are raw. They are fighters. Of course, they are Pashtun, they are Pakistanis. But the course of action which they have taken against the state of Pakistan and the innocent people of Pakistan, I would say, it qualifies them for a one-way ticket to hell. These tribes are famous to pick up fights instantly. They have conflicts among them for centuries. I think the only peace South Waziristan has witnessed in all these years is now when it's merged in KPK. It has been months that you haven't heard that one group has killed some other group and the other group is already having a revenge plan. And finally, Fata people are mixing in the national fabric of Pakistan. All credits to the sacrifice of Pakistan army and other law enforcement agencies. When the Americans launched their war on terror, they started bombing Afghanistan. 
there was actually no one to fight. Americans started bombing Afghanistan in October and American troops arrived for a proper ground offensive in December. 32,000 feet B-52 bombing was enough to disperse the so-called biggest threat to human civilization. At least this was what the Americans told the world. I would ask you to recall and tell that who was actually that biggest threat the Americans were talking about. The Taliban? No. It was the boogeyman, the Al-Qaeda. The Taliban acted as expected. They knew they cannot shoot down the B-52 flying 32,000 feet above them. So they dispersed in smaller groups. Some went back to their villages. Some went in the caves. They wanted Americans to kill one of them with one million dollar missile, not 500 of them with one. Actually the same good strategy they always use. It was not like Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi or similar families and sons that when Americans bomb Baghdad or Tripoli, somewhere near their palaces, then they have to go into caves to hide, which is a great change for them leaving this luxurious life and going into a cave to live. On the other hand, Taliban had nothing to lose. They actually had everything to gain. Like every American soldier who steps onto Afghanistan soil comes with a lot of weapons, a lot of accessories, a lot of things which they can capture from him. So the Taliban said, Hello Mr. Uncle Sam, Hello Mr. B-52, we are not fighting you till you come down and till you come in our reach and then we will come back to fight you. Until then, we are going for a coffee break, we are going for a chai break, and we will be back when you come over here. This is their natural way of life. They did not have to change anything. Actually, it gets better. When some invaders attack, they find peace and relief and move back to their social life. It's like having a self-reflection time for them. They actually love this situation. On the other hand, Al-Qaeda refused to fight for their host. Those hosts who have been keeping them for so many years, giving them, providing them shelter and refuge and security, Al-Qaeda simply ditched the Taliban. Many leaders of Al-Qaeda have gone missing way before Americans started bombing Afghanistan. Many moved out post the bombing. But to be honest, not a single one stayed back to fight the Americans on ground. You need to ask yourself another question. Why did Al-Qaeda behave almost opposite like the way they behaved when Soviets invaded Afghanistan? Well, when Soviets attacked, most of Al-Qaeda was not even present in Afghanistan. Many chartered flights to arrive in Kabul and fight side by side their brothers in Afghanistan. They fought valiantly, no doubt. Russians were absolutely nuts at that time. We had to protect our sovereignty also. We had to protect our borders. We had to protect Pakistan. So we went against the Russians. The whole war was funded officially by America, CIA and many Muslim countries against the infidel. When Americans came into Afghanistan, they came with more than 70 countries. These countries included all notable Muslim countries also. All Al-Qaeda members have been against all these Muslim countries. It was a great opportunity for them to fight the Americans, to fight the other countries which they have been against in their backyard and not to travel miles, thousands of miles and go attack them in New York or Washington. This was a great opportunity. But Al-Qaeda had different plans. None of Al-Qaeda wanted to fight Americans in Afghanistan. None of them wanted to support the Taliban's who have been hosting them. And since the moment of 9-11, they started seeking shelter. They had millions of dollars with them. They were willing to give them to anyone who would secure them a safe exit from Afghanistan. Did Al-Qaeda betray the Taliban? Well, the Americans said that they are attacking Taliban because they host Al-Qaeda. Where Al-Qaeda was seen in a hurry, to relocate from Afghanistan and save their lives. So the Al-Qaeda stepped over into Pakistan, where these old businessmen who were waiting for them to come for any price, 
$40,000, they were selling their product which was giving shelter, refuge and safety arrangements for the incoming fighters. Almost every house in South Waziristan was hosting foreigners and their hostel type lodging arrangements were hitting record high profits. These were the days when you would barely find a local criminal over there. Of course, it was tough competition. There were limited space and the foreigners were giving way more money for their services. I still find it very strange that some Pakistanis still saying that we could have helped the Al-Qaeda. Why would have we helped Al-Qaeda? What has Al-Qaeda to do with us? And many saying that we could have helped the Taliban. Well, we helped Taliban or not, the Taliban can answer this very well. But the thing was that, that Americans were coming into Afghanistan with 72 countries. Going against America for no reason was going against the 72 countries. And even Taliban's weren't fighting back. They were dispersing. What did you expect from Pakistan? The empty borders of Fata and Afghanistan and the smuggling routes in the Korjoin mountain ranges was an actual safe haven and an attractive easy exit for Al-Qaeda troops to come in. They all came into Jalalabad and from there they started immigrating into Fata area. South Waziristan was getting major chunk of Uzbek, Somalis, Abu Sayyaf and other fighters. Many tribals who had their jobs in Taliban government were also coming back. They had nothing to do with any ideology. They were simply there for work. They were either mercenaries with common mindset or far kinsmen. Now when the Taliban government was gone, it was pointless for them to stay there. So they moved back seeking the new opportunity which arise of hosting these uninvited guests. We never brought the war to Pakistan. We never asked Al-Qaeda to come over here. We were never willing to host them. It was these people, these criminal smugglers in South Waziristan who brought them into Pakistan. Out of mere self-interest and greed, Pakistan state had nothing to do with it. If the Americans were coming behind them into Waziristan, it was not because of Pakistan government. It was because of these criminal elements. We kept on politely saying to them, Hello, Mr. Brother, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't jeopardize the security of Pakistan. Send them back to their countries. But they did not listen because they were taking money from these foreigners. And they kept saying that if you tell me to send them off, I'm going to fight you. Hell yeah. You want to fight the state? Let's do that. It was not an American war we were fighting, my friend. It was our own war against a bunch of terrorists who came and invaded and started living in our areas. And there were locals who were supporting them. Local gangs of thugs and smugglers. You want to fight? You'll get a fight.